My name is Luke Laffin, and I'm a preventive cardiologist at the Cleveland Clinic. Um, it's my pleasure today uh, to speak with you about alternative therapies to lower blood pressure. Now, this is a question we get asked uh, many times is, you know, Doc, is there things that I can do uh, to lower my blood pressure without taking medication? And of course, uh, we start by talking about the basic things that everyone knows and which we have really good data that they help, uh, that lifestyle changes that help with lowering blood pressure. Exercise, eating a healthier diet, limiting salt, limiting alcohol, not smoking. Um, and we've touched on that on previous podcasts and videos um, uh, that I've done. Um, I think it's important, though, to also address some of the information out there about alternative therapies because although not quite as well studied, can be beneficial in the right person and most of them are um, not dangerous, so it's very worthwhile um, to give them a shot. Uh, one of the things um, to also keep in mind about anything that you choose to try and lower blood pressure is you know if it results in weight loss and feeling better and so that you can do more exercise and, and sleeping better well, those generally are going to have beneficial effects on the cardiovascular system and ultimately result in lower blood pressures now when we talk about complementary and alternative therapies for blood pressure uh, some of the um, best summary of data came from an American Heart Association um, scientific statement uh, published in 2013. And that looked at a variety of um, modalities um, that could potentially impact um, blood pressure um, by, by lowering it. Um, and so the way that they grouped them um, was interesting. Um, the first was looking at behavioral therapies or behavioral interventions. And one of the major ones that there's been a lot of study behind is meditation and particularly transcendental meditation. Um, you know, there's all kinds of different meditation, and I'm not an expert by any means. Um, but in most studies where they've done meditation in person, it does show that blood pressure can be modestly lowered um, by meditation. Now, these were typically in-person um, meditation classes um, or um, at least teaching in meditation. I don't know if we can extrapolate any of this data to some of these apps that are out there now on the phone, although I don't know why not. The studies just need to be done. Um, so meditation can definitely um, potentially provide modest decreases in blood pressure. Now, we're not talking um, that they're going to replace your two blood pressure medicines that you're taking, um, but can be helpful. Um, other things that we think about um, and that are talked about in this uh, scientific statement are biofeedback techniques. So cognitive behavioral therapy, relaxation techniques, uh, guided imagery, um, psychological education. Um, they provide a little bit of blood pressure lowering too. Um, now, this podcast is not the forum to get into the specifics of those, um, but there's definitely studies that show small, small decreases excuse me, in blood pressure um, with some of these interventions. Uh, one thing that I always get asked about is, um, is there any different types of exercises, et cetera? Well, we know that aerobic physical activity results in uh, lowering of blood pressure. That's very clear in all of the data. Um, we also know that isometric activities and um, resistance exercises lower blood pressure as well over a long-term basis. Other alternative exercises like yoga, um, there's a little bit less data for that. Um, and so based on that scientific statement, we can't say definitively whether it does or doesn't help lower blood pressure. Generally, I think yoga is, is beneficial or can be beneficial for just overall healthiness, well-being, um, and cardiovascular health. But again, the benefits of blood pressure lowering are um, not quite uh, as well delineated. Um, other alternative therapies that we think about, um, some people ask me about acupuncture. Does that help? Um, some studies show benefit, although again, not enough benefit to actually recommend it um, to lower blood pressure. Um, it's worthwhile a try, um, and then some people may have more of a robust response than others, particularly if that helps with relaxation, helps decrease pain, which we know can be a driver of elevated blood pressures throughout the day, um, then it's very reasonable to give it a shot. Um, there's also been some device-guided breathing studies um, that looked at its uh, specific um, 
essentially devices to help modulate breathing. Those tended to result in decrease in blood pressure. They've looked at alternative uh, movement um, strategies like Tai Chi, um, a small decrease in blood pressure as well. So all of those can be beneficial. Um, we talked about exercise. Then the question I always get is there are certain supplements that, that we can just take over the counter that are quote unquote natural um, that can lower blood pressure. Um, the short answer is no, there's not. Um, and, and that's just because there's not great data. Now, is, is there some that maybe things like garlic or CoQ10 could help in certain small groups of the population? Potentially, okay. Um, but we don't have a true consensus on that. Um, one thing that um, I always tell my patients is that if we're looking for something that has data that we can eat that will lower blood pressure, um, generally foods that are a little bit higher in potassium, okay. We know that potassium deficiencies tend to result in higher blood pressures, so trying to focus on those foods that are high in potassium, tomatoes, bananas, um, can result in, in beneficial blood pressure lowering effects. So hopefully this was helpful in dispelling some of the myths or um, some of the data um, behind alternative and complementary therapies uh, for lowering blood pressure. Thanks very much.